Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and we are delighted that you have tuned us in and brought us into your home. You're an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you. So give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at EWTN.com. We ask our family at home to Please be praying for the repose of the soul of the father of EWTN's creative director, Maria Kispersky. Her father is Mr. Alfredo Azula, and he passed away three days ago at the age of 86. Mr. Azula is also the father-in-law of our producer, Mark Kispersky. It, so now, please keep them People in may prayers. not know what Mark and Maria look like. But if you watch any of the shows, Marie is so involved in graphic designs, Mark is producing so many shows, you see their work all over the place, and they are an important part of this family, so we pray for the repose of the soul of her dad. Yes. Well, we were in Washington, D.C. We over, were. Over the weekend. We're here now. <laughs> I think we're here now. We're alive. We're here now. And uh, our time in Washington, D.C. was because of the 54-day prayer novena, praying the rosary for our nation for awakening in our nation and in renewal within the church, and in particular praying for life, marriage, and the family and religious liberty. And so this was a, a culminating rally there. And uh, we got to speak at this rally as well as Monsignor Charles Pope, mm -hmm. Father Frank Pavone, Father Richard Heilman, uh, Bridget Callen. Sister Bridget. Right, mm -hmm. from uh, Franciscan University, Doug Barry, Chuck Neff. And it was really powerful. There's mm -hmm. so many. EWTN supporters that were there. It was hot. We were out there, really right, in front, hot. right by the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And uh, the devotion of the people who came, hun, it was so beautiful. We were out there for three hours. Mm -hmm. There were people down on their knees praying the rosary, praying for our nation. And it was just absolutely beautiful, powerful, so many wonderful people out there. And then we found out that there were these, an evangelical group out there uh, called The Awakening. Right. And I know some of the people. And the call. And the call. The call was on Saturday, and the awakening, I think, is today. And I think they, they also converged together. Mm -hmm. They were there like for three days, and they had like 50 tents set up for each state of the United States. And they're playing this beautiful worship music, and they're praying for the same thing mm -hmm. awakening in our country, to go, for God to bless the nation, renewal within the church. And whatever state you were from, you can go into their tents. And then some of our people went over there to speak, and it was such a unity mm -hmm. thing. And it's beautiful for the church to be united in this way, to pray for awakening in our country and renewal uh, within, within the church. And then we have the good news on Friday yeah. about the HHS mandate. Right. I know you want to say a word well, about that. Health and Human Services mandate, mandating even for religious institutions, uh, groups like EWTN, that you must provide contraception and abortifacient drugs. We've been fighting this for five years. The Trump administration has kind of opened the door with new guidelines it's basically said if you're a religious institution, you oppose this on moral grounds, you know, come and appeal to us and we can give you an exemption. So we hope that that will take place for everybody who's involved with this. But this doesn't totally vacate right. the lawsuit that we have. So there's some complications with this still. It's a good first step, but as Michael Warsaw has been saying, this is not a done deal yet. So we need to continue to pray. We're encouraged by this news. It really does give us availability to get rid of uh, these, these lawsuits. Uh, but the government's going to have to admit, hey, we were wrong for, for even asking you to do this. Mm -hmm. So some complications there, but we need to, to pray that this would come to pass. Fully. Well, and I just thought it was really beautiful. We were getting off the plane and our phones were blowing up with yeah. all this information and the great culmination of the 54-day right, rosary. Happened Friday, yeah. It happened on Friday at like 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a holiday weekend. Yeah. So it wasn't a big news day yeah. that was exploding it. So we really need to represent it. And the House of Representatives has passed the uh, fetal pain bill. The president said he'll sign off. It's the Senate. We need the votes in the Senate. Call your senators. Tell them that you wanted to pass the fetal pain bill, which uh, says that from 20 weeks on, no abortions in our country because of horrific pain, mm. the killing of the unborn in the womb. Don't know if we have the votes there or not, but we're going to take a vote on that, I hope. 
And so, Cole, your senators, great things are, are happening in so Orlando. So we got to keep on praying, we got to keep on being active, and we won't stop this fight until our dying breath. Well, right now, we're going to meet with a beautiful couple when we get back. They came all the way from California, Bobby and Jackie Angel, and they're authors of a great book called Forever, a Catholic devotional for your marriage. They have a great website, JackieAndBobby.com. You won't want to miss this beautiful starring couple. Great stuff is happening in our country. Spiritual things are happening in this country. We want you to be encouraged, and this couple is another part of the renewal in the church and awakening throughout the world. We'll be right back. More to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're an important part of our EWTN family, and we have a live show, and we would love to hear from you today. So if you have a question for our guests, maybe you know Bobby and Jackie Angel, we want you to give us a jingle during the live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980, and you can always send us an email Jim and Joy at EWTN.com, and hopefully we can use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, today I bring you this very young and beautiful and vibrant couple, <laughs> Bobby and Jackie Angel, and they're authors of a great book called Forever, a Catholic devotional for your marriage. A newly married, middle years of marriage, or maybe you've been married a long time. Or maybe you're considering marriage. It's for you. This book is for you. Well, I want to introduce you to these two beautiful people. And you came all the way from California. Mm -hmm. And she's pregnant. Yeah, getting yep. on a plane. What yep. a hero <laughs> with two other kids. Yeah. Like, I just want you to know that no ordinary woman could do that. Oh, she's, so a, she's a hero. She's in a category of <laughs> being super. Yeah. We also say it's just time off of purgatory every time we fly with our children. <laughs> well, it is. Yeah. And God. this is Jackie. Yes. This I'm is Jackie. Bobby. Because yes. we yes. got Jackie and Bobby, so yeah. we want to make sure we got them right. Yeah. So why don't you tell our family a little bit? Let's back up and tell them how you two came to be, what you were doing before you met each other because I think that story is just a story to tell. Okay, um, my name is Jackie and I, I am a worship leader, a traveling speaker. Um, I had a conversion into my Catholic faith when I was 18 and so I just wanna spread the gospel any way possible, whether through music um, or speaking. We blog together, we you know have written a book. So we just want to, people to know the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, and yeah, why don't you share about what you do, babe? <laughs> Cradle Catholic from Tampa Bay, Florida, um, and got into my faith through a dynamic youth ministry program late in high school. Uh, we both, both of us came out of youth ministry and um, felt the call to give myself to the Lord in a big way in college and long discernment process led me to the seminary yeah. for a couple years and then uh, discerned out and wacky road led, led me to Jackie and yeah. now I'm like any rational man would do, drove across country for a woman. <laughs> yeah. Now mm -hmm. in California and yeah. working at an all boys school. So it smells exactly like the seminary. Yeah. Right. Right. All men, yeah. Yeah. there's no women to impress, but right. it's Servite High School. I feel blessed to be there and, and be able to juggle this ministry and the growing family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that, that whole area of discernment, you were in seminary and you're really in earnest seeking the Lord. What do you want in my oh, yeah. life? How do I serve you in my life? And you were also, you didn't know each other at the time, you were going through a discernment process. Oh yeah, I discerned being a nun when I was in college. Like, Lord, if you want me to be your bride, I mm -hmm. will do anything for you. I want to do anything for you. And um, so I was, you know, discerning what God was calling me to and how he wanted to use me for his glory. And we both um, went to the Theology of the Body Institute separately right. and got to learn more about Pope John Paul's Theology of the Body, which was a huge, you know, changed our lives. It changed our lives the way that we look at our faith, the way that we look at chastity and 
Um, and we actually went a second time mm -hmm. and met each other on the second course. Mm -hmm. And at this point, he was in seminary. And like any Catholic girl, I was like, oh, of course, Lord, you always take the good looking ones, right? <laughs> Um, and I and the of, one I would just like to fall in love <laughs> of with. Of course, like the yeah, like this amazing man. And so I kind of wept a little, but we became. I was I was happy a girl was talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Period. You know, so. And so we became friends. Um, and you know he's in Florida, I'm in California, and every once in a while we would say, Hey, could you pray for me? I'm doing this. I'm speaking, or he's doing this event. And you know, a couple of years go by, or about a year and a half goes by, and he's really feeling called out of seminary mm -hmm. and called to marriage. Well, we meet on another Theology of the Body course, and um, the day before we re-met, I started a 54-day rosary right, novena right. Mm -hmm. for my future husband, wherever mm -hmm. he was. Not mm -hmm. even, he wasn't even on my radar because I was right. like, well, he's going to be a priest. Um, and so we re-met at this course, not knowing that he also was praying like, Lord. Give me a sign. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm feeling called to marriage. Give me a sign that's loud and and blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, whatever, whatever you want, Lord. And beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, it, and was just excited to see my friend again. Yeah. And it was very evident in that week, uh, spent going deeper into John Paul's teachings on love and, and the meaning of our lives and, and, and marriage. Like, it was just like, oh, this is finally. Mm -hmm. And years in discernment, years of wondering, God, what the heck do you want for my life? Mm -hmm. And it was finally like, now you're ready. Yeah. Now where you would have grasped earlier in your life, where you would have tried to make your own plans, you were docile, you... We're willing to grow and wait, mm -hmm. and now you're ready. Right. And let me tell you, I wish every husband could go through seminary mm -hmm. because he took a course. One of his courses was called, it was pastoral counseling, right? It was called pastoral counseling, but it was really active listening. They mm -hmm. taught them how to actively listen. I was yeah. like, oh, every, very husband, every husband, every <laughs> husband needs to know that how to do that. They're like, how do I fix the problem? And they're right. like, you don't. No, you don't. You, you just listen. listen. You just say, Tell me she more. can fix the problem. She just needs to hear it from How does you. that make you feel? Mm. Right, right. So it was fantastic. That sounds so tough. <laughs> and you said, oh, God, this is the guy I want to And make sure you nod your head a lot. Nod, yeah, nod a nod, lot. Nod the head, yeah. <laughs> but so. that is so important. And the, you know the beautiful thing about our good Lord is, you know, all those years in seminary, nothing was lost. Nope. No, nothing. not at all. Yeah. You know, because people go, oh, he, he was just making a mistake. No, God uses everything. Look mm -hmm. where he has you right now. Right. And oh, the yeah. recall of all that education and all that discernment. To prepare me now to teach and totally. to be in the school. Well, I'm so thankful for even the men that he, the community mm -hmm. that he has. I mean, um, a couple of the priests were in our wedding party mm -hmm. and they, mm -hmm. I'm just so thankful for those men who, the accountability, the, you know, the things that even the man, I, I feel like the man of God that he is, is it, God brought us together at the right time right in both of our own journeys mm -hmm. and our discernment and what well, we both had to learn mm -hmm. it was yeah. God's timing is always the best perfect. you know it's well, your, perfect. your story is just so important for everybody out there especially those who are not married considering marriage I don't know what they mean by considering marriage but God brought you both to the place in terms of your own maturity a deeper conversion for you mm -hmm. and, and seminary for you and all the experiences there I mean, how many people who aren't even married yet would use the word discern? Are they really using that word mm -hmm. at all? But that's so important yeah. to, to discern, to say, Lord, you know, I'm, I want to be totally yours. How do you want to use me? And to actually pray, right. you know, mm -hmm. if it's to be you know, with a, you know, a mate, to pray for that mate, to say, Lord, help me to know, help me to see. And I think that's very important. That's kind of like right. the beginning point for those who aren't married. Are you really praying? Right. You know, what are you looking for? Who are you looking for? What do you think marriage is? And not just to transition into marriage because like, ah, well, we're living together, so maybe mm -hmm. this is the next step. But mm -hmm. we, because we, ta we talked a lot at single or, you know, young adult groups. Right. And um, they're always like, how do you know it's the one? Or how do you, it, it's like, listen, personally, I would, I, I'm like, Lord, I want to do what you are calling me to, but I would rather be single and joyful and yeah in the Lord mm -hmm. than to be miserable in a marriage. Right. I, I would, and I've met women who are, who got married when they were 40. Mm -hmm. I met a 50 year old woman who she said, Jackie, I am so glad I did not settle. Mm -hmm. Cause the, what's the, the other option, you, you either settle and just mm -hmm. like, eh, mm -hmm. or, or you, you wait on God's timing mm -hmm. for the person he has for you. And, and it's so much better than right. you could have planned yourself. And even, so. and even for those who got into marriage, like maybe they were living together and, mm -hmm. and then they got married and maybe they, also, they have settled. 
doesn't have to stay like that. Right, right? There's right. always a reset. Yeah. And obviously, your book is one of those great books where you can say, okay, let's reset. Let, okay, because we're together. So let's make, let's awaken this marriage. Yep. Let's awaken this love. Mm. And if love is lost and you, you have God Almighty right. who can infuse you and empower you and give you new love. Because right. he does that. Right. And I, I can't, again, I can't imagine being married without having Christ as the center mm -hmm. of the marriage because mm -hmm. he ultimately, you know, he's the one who shows us how to love. Right. We only love because he first loved us, mm -hmm. right? It says right. that in scripture. And, um, he's the one who shows us how to die to ourselves, how to lay down our lives for our spouse when it gets tough, when it, so. It's a look at God as the author of love not the enemy of love. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes again, God, you stay out of the bedroom yeah. or God, you yeah. stay out of, of these love plans or these whatever I have for my life. Like I'll check in with you later, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. an hour on Sunday. <laughs> but to say, no, no, you're the author of everything. I want you a part of this mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah. The, the, am I called to marriage? Because it is a call and mm -hmm. we believe that. Like, you don't just float into it as a stage of life. Like, is this really where I'm going to thrive? Is this where I'm going to be most myself and bless as much, you know, bring blessing to the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And be fruitful. Mm -hmm. I just yeah, hear, I hear a lot basically. of questions in my own mind um, in terms of people's discernment or even if we get married and we're not quite sure what that's all about. You know, I'm hearing like in terms of the discernment process or going deeper in marriage, you know, who, who are you? you know, who, who am I? Right. I could hear Jesus just coming saying, what are you looking for? Right. You know, what are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Why? So this is a natural thing when you see your future mate. And I saw Joy when she was a young girl at 14 and it was, and we dated for six years after that. So there's a, a natural kind of thing when it is your mate that's there. But it's not always that way. And, and there's got to be you know, some markers in terms of the natural law and what's written upon our hearts. Share about that for people discerning or now we're in marriage and we want to go deep in terms of understanding what we did here and who we are. How, how do you do that in terms of looking at yourself, looking at another, and what are you looking for in terms of marriage? Yeah, I think that's because like, that's the number one question is, how do you know? How do you know when, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and we kind of always say it's, well, it's easier to know when you know yourself well, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it is, the, and the more spiritually mature you are, it's a little bit easier because yeah. it was really nice to have a husband who, when we got, when we first met, we both knew that only God alone satisfies mm -hmm. us. No human being, even my best okay. friend, my husband, mm -hmm. is not my God. Mm -hmm. He's not my idol. He's not going to satisfy every desire of my heart. So coming into a marriage knowing that, like, huge, huge. you know, he's <laughs> like, because I feel like so many people get married and then they're so disappointed. It's like, oh, they he isn't meeting all of your needs. He, it's like, and well, then, oh, you lack wrong guy. Yeah. It's like, no, he's not God. You know, mm -hmm. we're both imperfect and um, we fail. I think. The, nat the natural thing, I always tell people, um, where one, someone told me that was married for a long time, 30 years, they said, my favorite definition of marriage, it's friendship with romance. Mm -hmm. And I just thought uh, the, the best, uh, the virtuous friendship, the highest type of friendship is a virtuous friendship, mm -hmm. which is you have the same goal. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, our goal is heaven. So if our goal for both of us, our goal is to help each other get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Like that and, and being married. Yeah. He's yeah. making you holy. Yeah. You're and making him holy. Those kids are just ending your life. Right. And it's just the, I mean, it is just the best subscription. Like I had said, said to, the prescription I had said, um, we had shared, when you get married, you give up half your life. When you have children, then you give up the other half of your life and you have no life. <laughs> true. But that's the point. <laughs> yeah. that you have no life. Right. So that you, God has brought you to the total end of yourself that now you can truly live for right. what you're designed to live for. Yeah. And it's for him and it's for your children and you totally I mean I had the privilege of being a stay-at-home mom. I gave my children my life. Yeah. I gave them. I was all in. I didn't just, I was all in. I gave them everything. Now I'm out. <laughs> now they can do their life. Yeah. You know, but it's the best stuff. And, well, and, and our people in this age think you're losing your freedom, right? That's kind of the, like, oh, more children. Yeah. You have less freedom. Or so even getting we... married is taking mm -hmm. away your freedom. And it's, it's not. It's, yeah. I, again, when we see in through a Christian lens as Catholics, like the difference between laying down our lives is not mm -hmm. a lack of freedom, mm -hmm. but it's, it's actually we're more fully alive. But this is an interesting conversation. We're enjoying it. I hope you want. <laughs> but, but this whole idea of, well, 
being going into marriage, it's not good for man to be alone, the Word of God says. So mm -hmm. there's a completeness there. There's something that's lacking in a way. But yet on the other hand, what you're saying, what Joy is sharing is that there has to be this degree of contentment with God, yeah. that it's all about being wedded to God. Whether you went on into the priesthood, it was all about you being a man that was going to be wedded. It was about w being wedded, whether you're going to become a priest or you're going to get married. It's about being married. Every priest is married to some, to God. And that's where we're going. The priest shows us that's where we're going in eternity. We're going to be married to him, not to each other. Um, so share again this whole thing of contentment within with God, and yet there's something added you know, in that marriage in terms of completeness in that, how both of those things come into play. We need one another, but yet we don't come into this so needy, needy, because we're content in God, or something happens to one of us that we can go on in our lives. You know, how, how do I live without her? How does she live right. without me? Well, we're trying to live this relationship so that I'm Jesus with skin for her, but she's married to him. But sure about that. This could go on for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> we love this stuff. So this yeah, is, we do this too. This is so great. Well, I you think know. for you as a seminarian. Well, uh, my prayer know. really became, Lord, I, I, I feel called to be a father. Show me what kind of father that is, a spiritual father, biological father, and really in my own prayer. You said like that, that who am I, the knowing myself question, that changes. Who am I yeah. in... In college, it was a different man than who I was in seminary, than who I was when I'm married now, than who I am when I have kids. Like, there's always kind of this becoming process. Mm -hmm. I haven't arrived yet. Mm -hmm. And so it's also taking those desires on the horizontal level and looking at the vertical that I am made for God and God alone. And once you, once you have that in order, as C.S. Lewis said, uh, put first things first, everything else will fall into place. If you put second or third things first, even, like, everything gets out of whack. And right. so... I'm loving God, then I can rightfully love my wife and my children and my job and everything else. Um, and I, I think in, in even the title of our book, Forever, it's not talking, it's not promising this is forever. Because okay. the vows are necessarily till death do us part. Mm -hmm. So it's an awareness of this, this too has a conclusion. Mm -hmm. This has an ending, but this is a foreshadowing, uh, foreshadowing of the heavenly love mm -hmm. that we're already being called to now. That can, once you enter into that, that will, it's always this, this, is, this is a dance mm -hmm. of, of aching for that and resting that when you can in prayer. If that's five minutes a day, if it's 30 seconds in between mm -hmm. your kids, like mm -hmm. banging on the bathroom door, right. um, Lord, help me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, resting in that so you can go and serve, so you can, I don't know, there, there's a dance to it that mm -hmm. you're never going to get it right in this life. Yeah. And that really gets into, you know, you've been mentioning the theology of the body and how important that has been for you. And I think a lot of growing number of people have delved into that. Many more just know the title but don't understand the theology of the theology of the body. But you were speaking about forever. Yeah. And so what we're tapping into is that which has been always in forever, which is the, that trinity unity and that relationship and about him marking that on our own bodies as male and female mm -hmm. and understanding that and what that means. And then at the end of our lives, coming into that for all eternity. That's what you're saying, that forever. And what a beautiful prophetic sharing mm. in the midst of so much superficiality and usury. Yeah, and even, I just read something from Peter Kreeft quoting C.S. Lewis, who said, even that is a proof of God's existence. Mm -hmm. Could, why, why would we develop that if there wasn't uh, something to satisfy that? Why, why would we even have this desire for a forever love? Right. At the biological level, there's no need for that. Mm -hmm. So that had to come from somewhere. Right. So even looking at that in an age of superficiality, that there is something that will satisfy, but we have to be able to, to detach from a Hollywood romantic love that we, for the eternal. that we get sucked into for the eternal, which is even better, right. which blows away right. the Hollywood version. Right. And, and really, even beyond the, the Hollywood you know, kind of thing, you know, John Paul II's words, St. John Paul II, is the opposite of, of um, love is not hate. The opposite of love is usury. Yeah. I'm sure mm -hmm. that you, you go into that teaching. And we see this day in, day out in our crisis pregnancy center, our yeah. medical center. Mm -hmm. And we just see all these people that are being used. We saw a thousand women last year, and the vast majority are really being used. And it's, it's even beyond, you know, it's brutal. It, it's it's demonic behind it, even though some of the people mm. aren't saying, well, I give myself the same. To use people like that. 
Yeah. And then we hear this other message of giving your life away. Those who lose their lives find their lives. Those who find their lives, you're going to lose your life. How is this message of theology of the body, of, of honoring the other, giving your life to the other, the self-donation, is it, is it resonating? Is, is it time within our culture? Are more people hearing? We're, we're seeing some people here because of pain. Like these people that are coming in are just like, they're ready to hear something different. They just don't believe it can happen. Mm. Right. Mm. What do you, what do you find? Because you're going around sharing, you're writing, sharing this message of what true love is, what marriage is. Well, I think that's the, no matter how far our culture goes, I think that's the beauty is that we have this stamped in our, we have this longing mm. and this ache for union, communion. And as, especially with social media, we feel like we're kind of, Connected, connected, mm -hmm. but we're really not, mm -hmm. and we feel more disconnected than ever. But we have, we still have this ache and this longing. So, even when we talk with people who feel like they're so far gone, mm -hmm. it's like you're not, because <laughs> you, you still have this longing and this desire for something more and for authentic love. And in a way, even though I work with young girls a lot, even though young girls are now being taught to um, let themselves be used, mm -hmm. oh, you, you know, be very aggressive mm -hmm. with the hookup culture and all stuff, they still know they're being used. Right. And, and sometimes they just don't know how to get out of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so obviously we need community and people who are gonna right. walk discipleship. Right. Um, but just to know like, oh my gosh, I'm made for more. Mm -hmm. I'm made for more. And you know, God, has amazing plans for me. And like, again, you are not the sum of your weaknesses right. and your failures. You are the sum of the Father's love for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that ache is always there. And it, no matter, you know, it's so that's to me what's so beautiful is that we might think people are too far gone, but they're never too far gone. Let's pause right at that point. The name of the book is Forever, a Catholic devotional for your marriage. Uh, Jackie and Bobby Angel. More to come. We'll be right back. We want to hear from you. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of this show. So if you have a question for our beautiful young couple, Bobby and Jackie Angel, just give us a jingle during the live broadcast. We would love to hear from you at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. And hopefully we can use your question or your comment right here on the air. I'm just reading through your book and some of the headings in the book. It's a book, but it's devotional, which is really powerful. But you have the heading, you know, why am I here? What is love? Um, what is marriage? How can our love last? What is God's plan for our family? What endangers our love? Uh, these are great questions. As we were sharing during the break, we asked questions similar to this to our clients that are coming to us, the vast majority who are women, who are in crisis pregnancy, um, and they speak about the love of this guy for them. You know, but he's not even there, or he might be with several other you know, women, and so we're always asking these questions. When you say love, what do you mean? When you say you know, you're in a relationship, a love, what, what do you mean? When you say Jesus, what do you mean? So we're happy to see you're saying, what is love? and what is marriage. Let's hit on, on those just quickly. You know, what is love when you're sharing it with people? Um, and, and marriage, what is marriage and love? Well, when we talk about what is love, you know, it's kind of a recalibration because when you're not taught what authentic life-giving love is, uh, you know, from your youth or from your family, mm -hmm. you're, you turn to pop culture mm -hmm. for that. And you see, oh, you know, people are, it's love is a feeling. And we're like, if love is a feeling, then again, when you're married, it's like, well, I don't feel like it anymore. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> or your vows, like, you know, you don't, we, we joke, we're like, we don't take vows to say, babe, I promise to love you till you're old and fat and ugly, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to leave for mm -hmm. someone else. You know, yeah. we don't say that. We say, I promise to love you till death do us part, for richer, for poor, for better or yeah. worse, and sickness and in health. Like, I, these are my, I'm promising this. And it's based on God's love, you know, his unconditional sacrificial love. Like, 
that the ultimate, we, we normally, we talk about the four loves mm -hmm. and that the highest of loves is agape love, God's unconditional love without conditions. Um, and that when you look at the cross, when you look at the crucifix, you see what love really is. It's to lay your life down. Mm -hmm. It's to, to, to lay your life down for someone. That's, that's the greatest type of love um, is that sacrificial, unconditional agape love. Joe, let's take an email. Okay, it says, my husband and I teach catechism class to the 11th graders, and we have introduced theology of the body using a DVD and a study guide given to us by our DRE. Now, this year's class is an excellent group of kids, mostly honor students, most of whom don't even have time for dating. They were highly embarrassed when we introduced the subject. Any <laughs> tips on helping them get over the embarrassment? And this is Shirley from Garden City, Michigan. Do you want to? You're he in works, it all day well, yeah, long. He works with boys. <laughs> right, and so <laughs> I don't know. I think I've, I've been given the grace. I think you may just have to pray for the grace to, to be convicted. This is important, mm -hmm. and I need to talk about it. And it's the fun, awkward thing. Sometimes you get the giggles. Um, because we're talking about human love and, and our sexuality and whatnot, but if you don't do the talking, someone else will. Right. And there's more than enough on the internet and in mm -hmm. pop culture to give destructive, mm -hmm. um, a destructive narrative of what it is. And so you may be the only one presenting the truth. The mm -hmm. parents may be too afraid to give them the talk. Right. Um, and so we know just a few clicks away on any Wi-Fi where a young person mm -hmm. or any person can get to. And mm -hmm. so. I would pray, I would say, pray for the boldness and the conviction to, to, to recognize this is important and if they're awkward, okay. Move through it. Move through mm -hmm. it. Um, again, do it with prayer, do it with um, the humility to know that I am a sinner, that I haven't done this right, I have not lived, we've all fallen in our sin in one way or another, especially when it comes to chastity. And so to pray, like to come at it not from a, you're hitting them over the head with this, but from the lens of, this is what the church proposes, mm -hmm. yeah. our great call to love and human yes. sexuality is, let's take a look at this yeah. and see if this doesn't resonate with what's written on our hearts. Right, right. And, that, and what you just said, Bobby, was so true because it takes courage to present it as it really is, but yeah. then, I mean, and I, this, I do it one-on-one -on -one with clients and women, but I also have the conviction that if you don't tell her the truth about who she is, that she is made in the image and likeness of God and for this, you know, catechism teacher, then the church has the answer. We're the one that have, we have the truth and we need to present it as it really is. That's love. Right. Telling someone the truth in love and saying, don't settle for less. Because it's not that there's all these rules and it's no this, no that. It's that the yes is so much greater. Mm. And God only wants to bless your life. And he wants to give you the best. And so there is that conviction. You better tell it. You know, and, and I mean, I encounter it. I teach it to women who are pregnant and they don't even still like to talk about it. You're just like, <laughs> really? You know, it's just like, come on. Like, let's grow up and deal with this subject because they never had it presented to them properly. Right. And so they always, it came in the back door, very defiled um, and very ungodly, you know? And sometimes clothed as godly, you right. know? Like we, we present it sometimes, the Christian, oh, we don't talk about sex is bad mm -hmm. or this is bad. It's like, no, this is so beautiful, it's right. good. And so I feel like too, when people are teaching theology of the body or yeah. human sexuality, to be just real, Right. We're, we're human, you know, our last, we joke, like our last name is Angel, okay, mm -hmm. but we are not angels, that's <laughs> metaphysically <laughs> heresy, you know, it's metaphysically heresy, like, but we are real people, and, yeah. and, and so it's always funny when we talk to teens or young adults, like, oh my gosh, you're real people, like, yeah. when we were engaged, we share the struggles, like, being engaged, like, listen, mm -hmm. I love this man, I want to be married to him, you know, it's not like we're Being engaged, you know, we didn't, we didn't live together, and so driving home at night, and for months, it's just, it's annoying, yeah. and it's... It's tough. Yeah. It's tough, it's real. but it's it, it it's that longing to right. give yourself, and mm -hmm. you know this is the one, and so your your marriage in like yes. the wedding night onward is something like oh, like mm -hmm. now we're together, right? And, and for the rest of your that life, that was worth you get the to wait. Together, right, it right. is worth the wait. Yeah, and too often, like the engagement time, for some reason, seems to be permission, right? To right. engage right. in the most intimate act possible, and it's kind of like, well, we're engaged now. We, and you know, you're just getting into the home stretch of holiness before God. We know, we know engaged couples who've broken up. Like, you're not married till you're married. Mm-hmm, right. So, 
No. That's Let's take true. another email. It says, my husband and I were both fallen away Catholics when we married eight years ago. And I have since come back to my faith, and he has not. In all other respects, he is sweet and a loving man, and we have a great marriage. However, I think it could be so much better if we had Christ at the center. How can I bring him back to the faith without risking pushing him further away? And this is Shannon from Goose Creek, South Carolina. Well, I would say never underestimate prayer, mm -hmm. the power of prayer. I mean, yeah. praying, oh man. I mean, you just think of St. Monica praying for her son and her husband mm -hmm. for their conversion. So prayer is so powerful, um, especially Our Lady. Our Lady is huge in that. Um, but I would say even something like this. So our devotional, we wrote this, it's a six week devotional, very simple for couples who've never heard Theology of the Body, maybe couples who don't normally pray together. Mm -hmm. It's basically a 500 word reflection every day on the Theology of the Body, the okay. church is teaching on what love is, marriage is, and then it's a couple questions to talk to your mm -hmm. spouse about, mm -hmm. and then it's um, a prayer. Mm -hmm. So even something is like, hey, would you want to do this with me? Yeah. Would you want to do this devotional? It's really simple. And we wrote it for, we, we had a couple in mind who they're Catholic, um, but they don't really know the church's teachings on theology of the body. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we wanted to make it simple enough. Um, it's not going to scare anyone off. Yeah, it's not going to mm -hmm. scare you. And we try to, we use humor and, and, you know, try to be very down to earth and not too heady. And, and so hopefully we've had a couple friends um, told us that they're like, wow, just even every night to get together with my spouse, mm -hmm. um, to have some something to talk about that we're not just like, all right, so how was your day? You know, but to have here's something the, deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. to have something deeper to, you know, discuss. And some of these questions are, yeah, you know, people have already discussed and something like, oh, I never knew that about you or thought about that or have never asked you that question. Now, what is that picture that we have behind us, Bobby and Jackie? What is that? Oh, from our... <laughs> that's our website? Yeah. But that's on our wedding day. Um, we actually... So we What's were... What's with the mop? Well, we took pictures at a train station <laughs> uh -huh. near, near our reception mm -hmm. site, and there was a mop just sitting. And, and you said, hey, this is real. So I said... <laughs> Think an American Gothic. Yes, that the pitchfork <laughs> picture. <laughs> and I said, wouldn't this be funny? And somehow <laughs> so it became. So he picked up a mop. So our our photographer gave him his glasses. Oh, that is too and, funny. Uh, somehow it became iconic. Yeah, so we <laughs> took so, a. <laughs> roll with it. But you know, that's real. Because, you know, it's like even in marriage, it's like in our house, the way we raised our kids, there's no, like, this isn't a woman's chore, this isn't a man's chore. It's just a chore and it has to get done. <laughs> and the whole point is to get the chore done so then we can be in relationship. Doesn't matter. So dad can do dishes, dad can change diapers. I can take out the trash if I need to, but I usually never took out the trash. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just so, those, so <laughs> kind of those things, right? Yeah. That's real in marriage. Right. But it's when we have these expectations like, oh, he'll be serving me and that it's all coming one way. And there are marriages out that out there like that, where it is all one way and one-sided. I, I would even say to that woman out there, um, why don't you say to your husband, for my birthday, it is my prayer that you come to church for me with my, on my birthday. Or to get him to come back in and then let God do the great amazing thing that only God can do in all those marriages and all of our marriages. Yeah, I think so. We would hear from teenagers like, oh, you're, you guys, your story is like a fairy tale. And, and we would we'd be like, okay, okay, hold on right there. We just want to be real with you. Like, there are days that we want to punch each other in the face. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but that's we don't. real. But, right. but they always like, oh my gosh. It's like, yeah, we argue. We, we, we had to learn how to argue argue in a healthy way right. um, where we don't punch each other in the face. Right. But communication. <laughs> communication mm -hmm. is huge. And so that we're real human beings, you right. know, that we do love God and God, we let God write the love story. And mm -hmm. so we are so thankful for that. Um, but that it's real. We have we have poopy diapers, mm -hmm. not each other's, but of our children. <laughs> not, so, yet. not yet. That comes Something later. Comes later. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we have the reality of toddlers who are wonderful and crazy and nuts at the yes. same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, so just the reality of life that I love being Catholic because we're all we're in the middle. Like we're not the extremes. Like I feel like when it comes to marriage, there are these two extremes of 
this fairy tale notion of marriage. Yeah. It's like, okay, this Disneyified, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, happily ever after. And then they never show you what that looks like. Right. Or this, well, marriage is terrible, awful, or like, oh, well, love is a choice. So you just pick anyone. Pick anyone. Right. And it's like, okay, how about the middle mm -hmm. where love is, it's going to be, it's beautiful, but it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. It's going to be work. It'll be messy. It's um, messy. There's a humanness to it that God absolutely cares about your life mm -hmm. and has kind of a, I have great plans for you, mm -hmm. but you have the free will to cooperate or not cooperate, and I respect that freedom, mm -hmm. and how great life is when we cooperate. Yes. We have about three minutes left. If you could answer that question, what is marriage in terms of the key components of that, so that those going into it would understand, and even those of us that are now been entered into it, you know, it, it deepens it. What are the key components? In three minutes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> there's, well, there's a biological component, obviously written in our bodies. There's a complementarity between male and female. Um, there's, you know, for the, the union of spouses and the procreation of children, as we say in the church. But we also draw upon John Paul's, um, yes. kind of the four marks of it, if you will, of, of love having to be, for, and to be an authentic marriage here that's free, total, faithful, and fruitful. That again, Say those again, because it's so it's, important. That could be know, another hour. Yeah. <laughs> no, just, just, just those titles themselves, because really we've just come into this, and we've been married for 40 years, right. and it wasn't you know, when Theology of the Body came. It gave us a new way of understanding this. So. Yeah, and they're embedded in the, the promises and the vows you take on your wedding day of, have you come here freely and without reservation? Are you free? Are you here, again, not being coerced, not addicted to anything? Are you free? Because right. then your love is free to love. And without reservation, are you here totally? It's not 50-50. Mm -hmm. It's 100-100, which is not mathematically correct. But <laughs> yeah, it's all of me. It's all of her in this, not 95% of me, That's not 98. Right. Not, again, a total yes, not conditional of, well, if this happens, I'm out. Or if... if uh, I don't like the way you put the toilet paper on, mm -hmm. then we're out. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a total love that's just you and everything. So free total and then faithful, which a lot of people I think get, right? It's you till death do us part. It's no one else. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, right. It's you and me, right? Mm -hmm. Like no emotional. There's no other option. There's no other, well, but no emotional or physical. Right. You know, uh, other, right. like that's it, you. Mm -hmm. um, so to be faithful and then fruitful. And they ask you this, are you open to children, right? Mm -hmm. And when we think of being fruitful, even couples who are can't have children or it's, a, it's like, God is still asking us to be fruitful spiritually, sure, right? right? When you think of the fruits of the Spirit, and there are 12 of them listed in our yeah. catechism, right? To That this marriage, we're open to children, but we're also going to bear the fruits of peace, joy, mm -hmm. love, and that when people encounter us in our marriage, hopefully that those fruits of the Holy Spirit um, of kindness, gentleness, generosity, yeah. that people see those fruits mm -hmm. and that we bear those fruits as disciples, but also our marriage bears those fruits to the world because the world needs... The fruits of the Holy Spirit. The world needs more joy. The world needs more peace yes. and kindness yes. and gentleness. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us thank today. Thank you You're for a having beautiful us. Beautiful couple. <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful book. Forever a Catholic devotional for your marriage. Um, so please, it's on Religious Catalog, and you can go to JackieAndBobby.com. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love for you to join us live right here on At Home and be a member of our studio audience. All you need to do is contact the EWTN Pilgrimage Department, send them an email, pilgrimages at EWTN.com, give them a jingle at 205-271-2966, and make your way to Irondale, Alabama. We would love to have you. Right now, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Joan, what do you have for us today? 
Well, greetings from Rome to all of you at home. And today I want to tell you about a very important talk that Pope Francis gave to members of the newly reconstituted Pontifical Academy for Life. They were holding their General Assembly and it ended over the weekend. In particular, what the Pope was stressing, telling societies, was to stop blurring the differences between men and women. He said, the biological and psychological manipulation of sexual differences, which biomedical technology now presents as a simple matter of personal choice, which it is not, said the Pope, risks eliminating the source of energy that nourishes the covenant between men and women, making it fruitful and creative. Now, of course, the theme for this year's uh, General Assembly was the impact of modern technology on humanity in all of its life stages. The Holy Father emphatically told Academy members that to radically eliminate any difference between the sexes and as a result, the covenant between man and woman is not right. He denounced how two new technologies are making it easy for people to so-called change their gender. And he called this the utopia of the neutral, saying it jeopardizes, of course, the creation of new life. Now, on the importance of the relationship between man and woman, the Pope said, men and women are called on each other. They're called to speak about love, but also to speak to each other with love, about what they must do to ensure that our lives together must be lived according to God's great love for all of humanity. Now, this is not the first time that the Pope has criticized changing gender differences. He told Polish bishops last summer that having children choose their own identity is against God's will. He said, today, children are taught this at school, that everyone can choose their own sex. And why do they teach this? He said, because the books come from those people and institutions who give money. Francis said, God created man and woman. God created the world like this, and we are doing exactly the opposite. Strong words, an amazing topic, a wonderful meeting, but time's up here. So back to you at home. Joan, thank you so much once again for that excellent report that fits so beautifully with mm. our show yes. today. And the Holy Father saying, stop it. Stop blurring the distinctions. Mm -hmm. This goes right to the heart of the natural order, what it means to be a human being, right. about marriage. The family reminds me of Sister Lucia's comments to Cardinal Kafara saying, mm -hmm. the final battle between the kingdom of Satan yeah. and our Lord is going to be about marriage, the family, the human identity, and re, you know, reworking creation w with a falsehood. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I was thinking as you were talking here with Bobby and Jackie about yesterday's second reading from Philippians mm -hmm. chapter 4, mm -hmm. where St. Paul says, whatever is true, mm -hmm. whatever is honorable, mm -hmm. whatever is pure, mm -hmm. whatever is lovely, whatever is worthy of praise, think on mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. And that's really the theology of the body. Yes. It's showing the beauty of human love, what it is called to be. Yes. You know, that we don't define our own reality. This is the reality God has given us, male and female, and how beautiful that can be. And I liked what they said, how it's not the Disneyland, you know, that happily ever after, mm -hmm. nor is it something to be endured, but it's this beautiful love that yes. you work at, mm -hmm. and then it can be something true, honorable, pure, mm -hmm. worthy of praise. It is so true. What yes. I like about this book, Father, was they had, they were headless, and mm -hmm. it was a design so you could see everybody and yourselves in this marriage, but I said, it's headless because Jesus is supposed to be the head of the marriage. Right. You know, because that's how marriage is. When we're at the altar, that's a great place of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that's where you give up your life right. so you can live for the other. Mm -hmm. And then G we, you enter into that trinity. It's just an amazing thing that only God could have thought of it. So it's not only the gift of yourself, totality of yourself, but it's also receiving, mm -hmm. right, the totality of the other and receiving God's grace that he's never outdone in generosity. Never. So whatever we give and the more that we give, it always comes back to us. Yeah. Jesus taught us that, that the measure we give will be measured back to us. Pressed down, overflowing is mm -hmm. going to be given Just to us. Just impressed right? with this conversation with right. Joan was sharing this whole battle for the mind mm -hmm. and for thinking and that scripture that says, do not be conformed to this world 
but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do not be mm -hmm. conformed. I think the word there in Greek is like skedzidomai. There's a schematic plan that Satan in this culture is trying to put on your mind. It's saying mm -hmm. fit into this plan, right. this design, this architectural design for your mind. And we need books like Forever uh, by the angels and the teaching mm -hmm. of the church and the Holy Father to say the way you think is going to lead to action. We need to right. think right, we need to think true, we need to dwell upon it and understand it and not be slow to, to speak the truth to our children. Mm -hmm. how, how could we allow them to be confused and picking their own gender and all these sorts of things? We need to know the truth, state the truth in a beautiful way and live the truth. You can kind of get overwhelmed with the power of the media mm -hmm. and the influence that it has, but truth always wins. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what Archbishop Chapu says. He says, well, that's built into us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The truth about who we are, our identity, reality, the way God has made us, is built into us. Right. And ultimately, that's what's going to prevail. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. We'll close us in a prayer and a blessing, Father. Father, we thank you for the wonder of our being, that we are beautifully, wonderfully made, and that you have a plan for life and marriage and family that is so beautiful, so true, so honorable, so worthy of praise. Help our families and couples to live this more fully and give this witness so needed today yes. to the world. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you Thank so you much you for Father. being with us today. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Do not be conformed to this world, to this culture, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Bye now.